Organic Compounds Organic chemistry is devoted to the study of compounds that contain carbon atoms that are covalently bonded to each other and to other atoms. There are over 1 billion carbon compounds that are widely varied in size, shape, and properties. Organic chemistry was originally limited to substances produced by living organisms. Things like proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, nucleic acids. But in 1828, Friedrich Wohler discovered how to make urea and developed lab methods for making carbon compounds that had never been produced by living systems. They are now studied as part of organic chemistry. Again, organic compounds consist of carbon atoms covalently bonded to each other and other atoms, most commonly hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, and frequently phosphorus and sulfur, and occasionally other trace elements such as the halogens. Electron configuration is the key to the characteristics of an atom because it determines the kinds and number of bonds an atom will form with other atoms. Valence electrons are the electrons in the outer shell. The inner electrons can't form bonds. So our outer shell on this model, which is carbon, this electron, this electron, this electron, and this electron. Carbon has six electrons, but only four can form bonds. So another way of saying that, carbon has four valence electrons with which to make covalent bonds. A covalent bond forms between two atoms. Each atom shares at least one of its out of electrons, and the outer electrons again are there, with the other when the bond is formed. The result is a pair of electrons being shared, one from each atom, to form a single covalent bond. So two electrons, one covalent bond. If a carbon atom is bonded to four other atoms, it will share one of its electrons with each of the four other atoms, making four bonds. One, two, three, four. In this diagram of methane, the central carbon atom has formed four single covalent bonds, one with each hydrogen. The carbon atom has shared one of its electrons with each hydrogen, while each hydrogen shares its electron with the carbon. The result is a pair of electrons forming each bond. Single bonds are shown by straight lines. Carbon is special. Carbon atoms form diverse molecules by bonding to four other atoms, which are in different orientations. This allows the molecule to take on a three-dimensional configuration as illustrated in the below ball and stick model. And we'll talk more about that model later. The balls represent atoms, and the sticks represent bonds. The 3D structure defines the molecule's function. Carbon also has the ability to bond with other carbon atoms to form chains, which is called catenation, a varying length and shape, including closed rings, and again, we'll get to that later. So here's our chain of carbons right here, at the dark right here. Those are all carbons. The balls are carbons, and those sticks are the bonds. This is a single bond. If we had a double bond, we would have two sticks connecting the atoms. Again, here's carbon, kind of in that grayish color. Hydrogen, typically in white. And then other atoms will be in different colors, such as oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And what is that double bond that we mentioned on the previous slide? Well, if carbon bonds with fewer than four other atoms, it can share more than one of its electrons with one or more of the other atoms. If it shares two electrons, it forms a double bond. If it shares three electrons, it forms a triple bond. Both types of bonds are illustrated here with carbon dioxide and hydrogen cyanide. Carbon does not form quadruple bonds, but carbon always forms four bonds. So here it has two double bonds, so that's four bonds. Here it has a single bond and a triple bond. Three plus one, four. When bonded with four atoms, carbon can only have single bonds with each atom. Double and triple bonds can only occur when fewer than four other atoms are bonded to carbon. 
Double bonds are stronger and shorter than single bonds, and triple bonds are even stronger and shorter. On diagrams, single bonds are represented by one line, double bonds by two lines, and triple bonds by three. Or in the ball and stick model, they have one, two, or three sticks between the atoms. Organic compounds play a large role in our lives. Fuels, gasoline, diesel fuel, propane, natural gas, fuel oil, electricity from fossil fuel plants. Combustion reactions release significant energy. Foods and medications from living plants and animals or synthesized. Clothing, cotton, rubber soles on shoes, plastics, plastic seats, plastic wrap, sports helmets. Because there are so many carbon compounds, we need to organize them to study them. So again, hydrocarbons now, they are study of compounds containing carbon-carbon bonds and or carbon-hydrogen. That's it, only carbon and hydrogen atoms. There are at least 100 million compounds there. Functional groups, those are atoms other than carbon and hydrogen. They're subunits of only a single atom or few atoms present in a series of compounds. They impart particular chemical and physical properties. Size, small molecules, smaller than 1,000 AMU, and then macromolecules, larger than 1 million atomic mass units. The functional groups in a molecule and the molecule size and shape combine to determine the physical and chemical properties of materials at the microscopic and bulk level. The shape of many macromolecules in solution depends on their environment and their association with other molecules. The role of molecular interactions on properties of bulk material is very important in the compounds of life, and they're classified as the biological macromolecules, and they include proteins, carbohydrates, lipids and fats, and nucleic acids. Carbon can form covalent bonds, giving rise to many carbon compounds. Well, we've now said that about three or four times, so hopefully you remember that. It is easier to study them by grouping them into homologous series. A homologous series is a family of compounds that have the same general formula and the same types of bonds, single, double, and triple. Have similar but not identical chemical and physical properties and show a gradual variation in their chemical and physical properties as the number of their carbons increases.